Welcome back to Learning to Code with Python. In this lesson, we're going to do some more animation, and we're going to learn about a new programming concept called objects. In our last lesson, we created an animated ball that bounced around the screen. And at the end of the video, I asked you to think about what you would need to do if you wanted to have two different balls bouncing around the screen. Well, the obvious answer would be to make a second ball, right? We could call it ball two, and we could maybe make it a different color. But now that second ball is going to need its own x speed and y speed. So we probably have to copy and paste this and call these x speed two and x and y speed two, and maybe make them different values. Now we get to our animation loop. And here's where we're moving the ball, finding its coordinates, and telling it whether it needs to bounce off the wall or not. Well, we have to do all those things again for the second ball. So we would have to paste everything in here, make this ball two. This canvas.move has to be for ball two at x speed two and y speed two. And then we need to make sure we bounce the ball with its speed as well. So if we run this, you'll see that, well, that works. And we have two different balls moving at two different speeds. And that's fine. What if we wanted to add a third one? Well, we have to go through that whole process again. Four, five, six balls. You'd see this would start to get really long. And every time we paste in, we have to make those changes. There's so many opportunities to make mistakes and forget to fix something. And then you have to go through, and you imagine if you had a bunch of these, trying to go through here and find where your mistake that you have to fix is would be really difficult. As a general rule in programming, if you see yourself repeating the same kind of code over and over again, or copying and pasting a big chunk of code to use it again, it usually means that you're doing something wrong. Or if not wrong, you're doing something the hard way that could be done a better way. That better way is by using something called an object. An object is just a way in programming to create an item in your program that may have a whole bunch of different properties and behaviors collected in it. For example, we want to make a ball object. That ball object is going to have some properties. It's going to have its, its shape and size and color. It's going to have its x speed and its y speed. These are all properties that each ball will have. They'll be different for each ball, but each ball will have those properties. And each ball is going to have a behavior. The behavior is that it moves, and it checks its coordinates and bounces off the wall. And every ball should know how to do that. So if we create an, a ball object, what we're doing is we're defining a generic ball and all the properties and behaviors that a generic ball should have. And then we could create as many balls as we want. As long as they all follow and are one of those generic balls, then they will have all those properties. Don't worry if this is confusing at first. This is a concept that takes a little bit of practice to get used to. And after we've gone through it a few times, you'll see it'll start to make sense. So how do we start? Well, we need to define what that generic ball is. Okay, And the way you define an object is using the class keyword. So we'll call it ball. Now, typically in Python, the general rule is that we use capital letters when we're naming classes. We keep variables as lowercase, because they're easier to type and read. But when we're defining the class, we use the capital B to sort of set it apart and indicate that we're making, we're defining a class here. And the capital B ball will be the generic ball that defines what properties all balls should have. So I'm going to go ahead real quick, and I'm going to delete all this ball too stuff just to keep things a little cleaner so that we can see what's going on. 
So what do we need to do in our definition of the ball? Well, first we need to define all of those properties. Remember the shape and the size and the color and the speeds and all those things. And the way you do that is, since we want those things to be set up when the ball is created, what you can do in Python is you create a special function. We define a special function called init. And it has those double underlines under it because it's a special one that every object can have. So that Python knows to look for this function called init. And if it, if it exists, whenever the object is created, it's going to do whatever it says to do in there. So we're just going to fill in a little bit more code and then I'm going to explain what it's doing. So what we want to do is we want to create, we want these commands to happen when the ball is created, right? But we need to name things a little differently because each object is going to have its own properties, its own speed, its own shape, its own um, color, etc. Then these variables need to be named uniquely. We can't just say x speed because every ball will have its own x speed. And that's what this little self um, name is for. So if we call this self.shape, then each ball is going to have its own shape that belongs to it. And each speed is going to have its own, I'm sorry, each ball is going to have its own x speed and y speed that belongs to it. So if I make a ball named Joe, it's going to have Joe's dot shape and Joe's dot x speed and Joe's dot y speed. So that will set those properties whenever the ball is created. And here's how you would create a ball. So let's say we want to call it uh, new ball. Well, we're going to say that new ball is a capital B ball. And now when this code gets run, this capital B ball is going to say, go ahead and make new ball one of these and give new ball a shape that's an oval of this size filled with orange and give new ball an X speed and a Y speed of four and five. Okay. I'm not going to run this yet because we're going to get some errors from this code still because we have to clean this up as well. Because the ball needs to also know how to move around the screen. We want all of these commands to be part of the ball's definition as well. So what we're going to do is we're also going to define something called move. We're going to say, here's how you move yourself. Okay, And that's what all of these things are going to be. So I'm going to cut these out, and I'm going to paste them in over here and indent that a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now we need to just make sure that what we're moving is our self.shape. And we're moving at our self.x speed, our self.y speed. We're checking the coordinates of our shape. And then we're updating our self.y speed and our self.x speed to tell us how to bounce off the walls. OK. There's our class ball. Now new ball will have a shape, an x speed, and a y speed. And new ball will also have a command called move that'll tell it how to move. So that means in our while loop here, we can just say new ball dot move. And now every time we go through our animation, it's going to say, take the new ball and do whatever move says to do. Well, move says to actually move it with the canvas dot move command, check its coordinates, bounce off the wall. So if we run this, we've now got an orange ball that bounces off the walls again. So your first question is probably, why did we do all that work to change this around and we still have the same thing? Well, now it's a whole lot easier to create multiple balls. So if I want to say new ball two, that's also a ball. And then I only have to say new ball two dot move in my animation loop. And then they will both be there. Ah. Where are they? Well, the problem we have is that both balls are the same size and have the same speed. So they're just right on top of each other. 
So it would probably be good if instead of the speed always being, the x speed always being four and the y speed always being five, we instead made these random. Let's put some random numbers in here so that every time a new ball gets created, its speed will be different from the others. And that way we'll be able to see them separately. Good. Now you may have noticed <clears throat> when we created the new ball here, we put these parentheses after the capital B ball class definition. Well, the reason for that is that we can pass in values to the ball to specify certain things that we want to specify. So for example, let's say that we wanted to be able to say ball, I want this one to be red, and I want this one to be green. We we want to be able to put a color in here and have that go in here. And instead of filling with orange, it'll fill with whatever color we said. Well, that becomes a argument to our init function. So after self here, we can say color and let's fill with color. So now when we create a new ball, this value that we give here red gets called color. And then in our init function, we use it here to call it color. And now when we run, each ball will be its own different color. Now it would also be nice to be able to specify the size. Right now, we're always drawing the same size. Um, we're always drawing the same size ball. So we could also add a number after here for how big we want the ball to be and call that size. And then instead of putting the 60 there, we'll put the size. So we'll draw from 10, 10 to size, size. And now those two balls will be different sizes. right? And notice we don't have to do anything about the bouncing off the walls for the different size balls because it doesn't matter and close that. It doesn't matter how big it is, it's just bouncing off when its coordinates say it's touched the wall. And this video has already gotten pretty long, so we're going to stop there and I'm going to let you experiment with this. You can see that if you want to make another ball, it's as simple as creating the, um, creating the ball object and making sure that you make sure to tell it to move in your animation loop. Okay, So if you wanted to make multiple balls, you can. Now my question for next time is, what if I want to make a hundred of these to bounce around the screen? How would I do that? Think about that, and we'll talk about that next time. Thanks for watching.